So how did I get here? I was born in the 70s. Star Wars hit the theaters shortly after my birth, and though too young at the time, it would have a huge impact on my life. A love of movies, fantasy, science fiction, and a galaxy far, far away were instilled early on. And the film that I remember the most vividly? The Empire Strikes Back. I love you. I know. I saw it in the theater with my dad. And if that's not a great way to start off a love of science fiction and fantasy, I'm really not sure what is. Other films from that time that shaped me included Terminator, Robocop. Dead or alive, you are coming with me. Predator. Do it. Do it. And two of my favorite films of all time, Aliens and Blade Runner. The 80s was mostly a whirlwind of cartoons and toys. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Robotech, and who can forget, He-Man. By the power of Grayskull. What a wonderful time to be a kid. All these did their very best to spawn toy lines that could compete with the Star Wars toy empire. Making up stories with my friends or by myself in the basement was pretty easy and helped nurture that imagination that I like to think it keeps me going till this day. He's got Luke Skywalker. High school during the 90s was interesting to say the least. Challenge your imagination to come alive and to battle with the creatures of Dungeons and Dragons. And in high school I was introduced to Dungeons and Dragons for the first time and more specifically Dragonlance for any of you guys who care. But all sorts of role playing and video games also came my way and I made lifelong friends that I still game with today. As soon as I graduated from high school, I moved to Vancouver. Vampire the Masquerade skyrocketed in popularity during the mid to late 90s and was a huge part of my life, as was the whole goth industrial scene in Vancouver. I found myself instantly in love with the music I'd find in those dark and gloomy clubs that were so crazy and new to me during this time, and I still head out with my wife to those nights today. It's no coincidence that The Crow and Nightmare Before Christmas and The Matrix were some of my favorite movies of that time, and for a lot of other people too. I had moved to Vancouver with nothing but some money my mom said was for college. I didn't have much of a path, and it wasn't until after my dad passed away in the late 90s that I finally decided what I wanted to do. New media. I was going to be a web designer. And with my mom's help, I got a student loan and headed off to Vancouver Film School to chase the newfound dream. I graduated and the dot-com bubble burst. I was doing security at bars and signed up with an agency to become a background performer. All right, boys, here we go. Yeah. Sorry, Chief, these guys are with me. Hey, nice to meet you. As much as going to school for new media failed at the time, I'd argue that it's finally come full circle. Going to goth bars introduced me to Aaron. And in the early 2000s, I was living with Aaron. He currently runs Harrison Arts, but at the time he was just Mr. Dark, builder of crazy stuff. He'd help get me started in leatherworking and introduce me to the Society of Creative Anachronism, a huge part of my life. We would be pirates together for many years with some of our other friends, and I was instantly drawn to the fighting, and it's become one of the things I love to do most. Aaron's been responsible for a ton of the props on Arrow for many years, as well as a slew of other Vancouver productions. The early 2000s is also where I met my wife Cynthia, a stained glass artist and fellow creative. She shares the same passion for music as I do, and we've been hitting clubs together for many years, and we'll keep doing it probably until we're both dust. She helps motivate and drive me, and you'll see her in a video of mine soon enough. Obviously, the 2000s saw a great many movies that I adored come to the screen. The Lord of the Rings trilogy and Gladiator feeding my fantasy historical side. The frost. Sometimes it makes the blade stick. And the sudden rise of superhero movies like Spider-Man, The Dark Knight, and the incredibly important movie to us MCU fans, Iron Man. In 2003, I got a job as a background performer on Miracle on Ice. There I met a kindred spirit named Levi. He was just sitting there making chain mail as they filmed or as he would instantly correct me, mail, not chain mail. We'd stay connected through the years and our friendship would be an important part of this story. He's a pretty driven guy and he'd find himself working full time in the props department in Vancouver right away. During the mid 2000s, I got a job at Heritan Leather. The SCA and living with Aaron had sparked me and I pushed for that job until it finally happened. It would become Tandy Leather just before I quit and I learned a lot there. But when I was offered a job on Pathfinder by my friend Brad who used to work at Heritan, I didn't even blink. Even though it was only one month of work, the chance to work on a film building cool stuff made perfect sense. I threw away the job security of Tandy Leather for one month of work on Pathfinder. It was pretty amazing and it was as close to doing what I thought I was meant to do as I'd ever been and it was a great experience. 
I thought to myself, that was it. I'm in, I'm a prop builder, work all the time, right? No, it dried up pretty quick. After Pathfinder, my life was an assortment of jobs, working at clubs, doing background work, and doing leather work when I could. I started to build a reputation for sport armor in the SCA, and that helped me grow a lot and made me more confident in my skills. Around this time, I also got a chance to build armor with some friends for both Underworld 2 and Dungeon Siege. But I never really was the guy people would go to for leatherwork. So I had to make sure I kept my hands in a few things to keep the bills paid. And picking up some small prop and costume jobs here and there started to pay off as I built my resume. Also while all this was going on, there was the release of World of Warcraft. A game that had the ability to create lifelong friendships with people you've never even met, and destroy your closest relationships all in one go. I played it pretty hard, sometimes I'm not even sure how I managed to come out on the other side, but I certainly was into it for quite a while. The SCA has kings and queens, barons and baronesses, knights and squires, and I started taking the whole SCA combat thing a bit more seriously around this time, fighting regularly and making sport armor for people. I was even squired to Ulfgar. On top of everything else amazing about Ulfgar, he also makes some pretty badass shields, and his squire took note. I finally got into the film union in 2010. I got pulled into set deck by my friend Isaac, who I'd worked for at various club nights through the years, and that set deck got me full union status. I started getting some costume and prop days here and there, and then finally hit my stride in 2014. Levi. You remember Levi making mail on Miracle on Ice? Well, he contacted me wondering if I wanted to work on a little movie called Warcraft. I was working on Arrow at the time, but this was another thing that I couldn't say no to. Warcraft was a huge part of my life for a bunch of years, and the chance to be a small part of that movie was incredibly important to me. Our team was pretty small in the armor building area, but I got a chance to work with Augusto Grassi, look him up, and just seeing how he works and applying some of it to what I do was huge. I even bumped into Swifty on set, a famous YouTuber who did Warcraft videos at the time. It was five months work or so, and at the end of that I had almost enough days to become a full costume department member. I managed to get those last few days and work on a few shows like Once Upon a Time up until fairly recently actually, with my last on-set day being in 2018. I did manage to build for a smattering of shows in between days on set, but the on-set days were killing me creatively. In early 2015, while that costuming was still going on, Levi and I decided we wanted to shop together. Levi has an innate ability to just force things into existence, so we got a great shop space here at Parker Street Studios, an artist building in Vancouver. I did reenactment armor and the occasional mundane leatherworking project to pay the bills as I slowly built my prop and costume building resume. By this time I'd gotten pretty good at the whole SCA fighting thing and for this I was knighted. There's a lot of factors that go into that decision, but needless to say it was a pretty big deal. And it just goes to show how much I love this kind of stuff, not only making it, but living it. I was still working on the set in the early days of the studio, but I weaned myself off it and the first spark of what you're watching today was done in late 2016. After talking with Levi about his YouTube for months, It's a weapon of destruction. I decided to make my own and published my first video, making a Viking round shield, something I had been taught by Ulfgar when I was a squire. I didn't even know how to monetize it properly, and it was pretty rough, but people liked it, and so I started adding more videos. Also during this time I started getting hit up for a lot more prop and costume building jobs right here out of the studio. And my armor building for sport combat slowly dwindled. And of course while all of this is happening there are many amazing movies coming out that I love. Thor Ragnarok, one of my favorite movies of all time. I choose to run toward my problems and not away from them. That's what and the epic level of Infinity War and Endgame are going to go unmatched for some time. Fury Road was amazing, and that post-apocalyptic style is something I'd love to play around with soon. And if there's a Deadpool 3, I hope it films here, since I got to work on Deadpool 2 and working on Domino's props was one of the highlights of my build career. The focus since that first video has slowly shifted. Learning how to live off of social media has been an interesting process, and as the revenue from my YouTube slowly grows, my work in other areas dwindles. I've almost completely stopped making sport armor for people, and it's pretty rare unless you are incredibly convincing. And I find that film jobs that aren't creatively inspiring are becoming more annoying and a hassle as I want to see my channel grow. If you get anything at all out of this, take a look at where I trusted my instincts and went after something I wanted. I didn't always land on my feet, but even those failures helped make me into who I am today. And brought me to this point in my life. Trust yourself. Go after your dreams, cultivate friendships, and never settle.
Oh, and keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.